Hi audience. Yes, this is a scene I wish we had more of a norm towards. Um, just preserving moments of, her, of ourselves, especially, especially of our best selves. This has somehow magically found me during a time when it most needed, even though I could have used this, even though I could have used this at a much earlier time because I hate repeating myself. So this is a way to make myself repeat myself less. And I'm so happy that Andrew Zuckerman has found me to capture me. What's up, Alex? You have a package here, I'll say. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you want this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there, I'm going to bring all my stuff in. Yes. And if you want to say hi. Yes. Okay, hi. <laughs> Cam is already filming. But... Three, hi. Oh, awesome. Yes, it's actually special to just film this. Um, yeah. Awesome. This is a cool camera. How many, what, what type of camera is it? And how yeah, you can cost? take a peek. So I'll just turn the face around so we can uh, Oh, holy shit. I love this. Um, but basically, this is a camera for my film class. Okay, for a film class. Uh, do you uh, borrow it or do you buy it? I am borrowing it. So everyone gets to use this type of camera. Oh, do you know how much it costs? I think that what's crazy is the tripod costs like $900. Uh-huh. And I think the camera might be a couple grand. Yeah. Couple grand two thousand. Does it auto adjust? Does it have what? Does it auto adjust at all? Um, it does auto adjust, but I'm in manual right now. You're in manual. Okay, so it's like, wow. Okay, interesting. Interesting. I see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I mean, this is obviously the first shot of this film I'm trying to make with you. Uh huh. But um, I don't really know what we're gonna film or what we're yeah. gonna do. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, that's true. Because I think. If I also know that I know that we, we, last year we actually discussed making some film of me that might have transcended some of the questions Alan said, Alan asked asked me simply because you might sometimes have better we, you might have better questions than him that reveals more of who I am. Yeah, no, no, this, no, this, no this is the, the beautiful uh, the beautiful images around here. Yes, yeah, so I've been here for a while. It's really cool and stabilizing for me. How long have you been in Cambridge? Uh, say three years or three and a half now. Three and a half years. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. I think that once I'm trying to do more is recapture more of myself. Uh, if this is what you're doing for me, and I, and I don't do enough of because, um, in the long run, what lasts, what lasts is, uh, if you want to like resurrect yourself or not, not like resurrect, but resurrect some AI version of yourself is to basically re recapture and record more of yourself because then it'll be able to uh, create say, a simulation of you in the future if you capture yourself in enough detail, which I, th I think we should, should do. Capture him? Look at the Pokeball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's actually important. Um, What's important? Oh, capturing me in my natural habitat. Oh, yeah. Like, Alexander on Lane was the first one who said that someone just should just follow me around the camera to capture me in my natural habitat and see, okay. to see what interesting things happen around me. Um, Your natural habitat is like this hilariously messy room. <laughs> it's actually a good natural habitat. It's like, oh, I like really like how clean and how self organized it is. Like, And also, like, I think wealth is data, in a sense. Um, I mean, wealth is also use, but wealth is data. Uh, so the more data you have about yourself and your operation and action patterns that confer in the world, the more of a certain type of wealth you have and the more, say, future people understand you. Because I think, like, in order to, like, live for the long term, you have to, like, live for future people rather than competition or comparing some of the people, people in, in the present. Because a lot of my skill set is kind of like develop uh, is is like so optimized for uh, for basically being the, being someone of the future rather than someone who is like tied in with um, traditional shit other people tied tied in with. But also, I think I do think that living in the future does mean uh, mean in some in some respects recapturing the developmental process in which you that made you you. And I think that shows someone in the most beautiful uh, that that's like, that kind of beautiful in many ways to be able to recapture someone's entire um, entire um, develop uh, entire basically the entire way that they became who they are, which I think basically captures the essence of someone. <laughs> <laughs>
Doesn't she have something in it? What? <laughs> oh shit. Holy shit. This is it not good? Well, is that? It's like a lot black. I probably took it away. What? Wait, why isn't it good? Hmm. I'm gonna try. Like this. Although I, I really care about intergenerational transfer or transferring the essence of yourself to younger, to new people, because there's a chance that newer people might care more than, than older people, especially like the more unusual you are to someone, someone the more the more they may think about think of you, and the more you might mean to them. In fact, especially if you're unusual enough to inspire them to make major life changes, which somehow I've inadvertently done in a number of people. What, what the fuck is turmeric? Turmeric? Don't know what turmeric is. It's an Indian spice. It's really All Indian households have ter lots of turmeric. Interesting. It's like very antioxidant. Um, it's has like, it's, it has like, very, like hermetic effects. That's why, like, I really love Sean Parker's uh, recordings. Mm -hmm. Like, there were videos of him taking back during the Napster days, and that was when he was, like, so ebullient, disrupting uh, fucking everything. He, when he had so much courage and confidence, whereas now it seems like everyone is just so scared of doing doing all that shit because they're just scared someone will scream at them or criticize them. Or that it's, it's possible, possible to do it and then not to not see the blowback, or, or even if we do see blowback, it just doesn't fucking matter in like 5 or 10 years. And the fact that it's out there matters more than any of the blowback or hate your mail you get. Especially like early YouTube, um, you saw a lot of people making fun of each other in their comments, and yeah. it really doesn't matter. Um, you just can't live life according to how the haters review you. You have to live life according to which people who give the most charitable impression and interpretation of you will see you, and they're the ones who are like most likely to redu reduce your chances of late life loneliness, which is like one of the most important reasons why it is important. Yeah, I feel that. You don't want your life to, like, say, be empty by the time, like, for the time you're old. You you want to be able to see. You want to be able to be see see. See, see and simulate what your life was like in, in, a, in a far past. It doesn't necessarily mean living in your past, but rather um, just being able to re-simulate it. So it's like, I think people maybe should record maybe, say, 10% of each day. I think even, even, if, even if you just record like the 10% of each day, that, that would be such a beautiful experience, especially because there's a lot of like time dimensional data that is lost. What, is, what are you thinking right now, seeing your reflection in this so selfie? Yeah. Um, how do I look with this weird ass haircut? I don't know. It's not like that style the best way right now. But it's not about thinking words. I don't think it words either. But could you think? Could you be conscious without reflection? Are my eyes bloodshot? And how bloodshot are they?